feelings. And welcome to Fuck Your Feelings, the greatest podcast to ever exist. We got a fire show today. Feel good about this show. I really do. We got Jamie Riley. What's good? Just met her three weeks ago. <laughs> Shout out to the casting process for this podcast. Yo, like, free Monday? Yeah, exactly. I just look out of the bushes like, oh, you come. Uh, <laughs> nah, shout out to Jamie. She was very complimentary and nice to me. I liked her energy, so that's why. If you give me a compliment, you have a chance of being on this show. Uh, <laughs> yeah, go far. We, we got Keisha E. What's up? What's the E stand for? Can't tell you all that. Okay. Mm. <laughs> we, had, we had somebody yesterday didn't want to tell us their real name. Uh, Seoul Korean. You know Seoul Korean? Mm-mm. He, uh, Anyways, he a Korean dude. I was like, what's your real name? He was like, I would not tell you that. I was hey, like, man. Yeah. I just want to say, don't be just having anybody on this podcast. <laughs> That's true. You know what I'm saying? You're going to lower the brand. I'm not saying that person is not a good person, but don't just be having... You heard you you heard a uh, uh, minute Mike. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know what? And you're not wrong. And we got James Davis, the phenomenal James Davis. Davis, you know what's so funny, bro? I ain't even go front. Somebody DM me about him, and they had already did the podcast, and they okay. was like vouching for their homeboy. Okay, okay, okay. You see what I'm saying? I just don't want you at, at open mics. Like, I like that one joke. You want to come to the, <laughs> the podcast? <laughs> hey, man, speaking of liking one joke, uh, <laughs> Monique special. Uh, no, no, no. <laughs> Can I just say there's, Go no, for it. there's no better conversation, I think, than comedians talking about other comedian specials. <laughs> Do you think uh, so? Well, I, I, love, I, I love being in a spirit of petty. Yeah. So. <laughs> no, but for, but for real, though, I wanted to talk about it. And I'm only bringing it up because I was just at uh, Naeem's screening, which Keisha was in. <laughs> Killed it. That was a Thank great, you. great, yeah. great. Uh, Side note, people invite me to shit. I didn't know about it. I always want to be there, but nobody tells me about nothing. This is, I'm sorry, back to your story. Yeah, you know what? Well, Keisha was in it. <laughs> Keisha was in it. That's yeah. how she got an invite. <laughs> I, I, I got an invite. This is the power of I hitting the like button on people's shit. I hit the like button on Naeem's post. He, right after I hit the like button, he sent me the invite. The algorithm <laughs> thinks that me and Naeem are beefing. Oh. Sometimes the algorithm can, can just create a beef. That's true, though. Like, like <laughs> Naeem ain't been on my feed. I follow him, but the algorithm be like, you don't need no Naeem news. That's some true shit though, bro. <laughs> Sometimes I have to go to like people that I fuck with. I have to go to their page mm-hmm. and hit some some like 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 some of their content just so their shit will start yeah. back popping up yeah. on my feed. So anyways, that's how I got the invite, right. you know. But you can also like watch people's stories. Like if you watch people's stories, then they'll start like, like, oh okay, you actually care about this person, and then they'll like hit the feed. Mm. Like I'm trying to stay off. Mm. Lately, yeah. I've been trying to be off Instagram as much as possible. You doing the right thing. Like I do two, three scrolls if you don't show up. If you're not the first three, four stories, <laughs> it's work. Yeah, it's a lot of work to maintain relationships on fucking Instagram. It is. I'm like Jesus, man. But back to the we gonna get back to this goddamn Monique special. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> I, I, I haven't seen it. We Me neither. Go, y'all ain't seen it. No. I've, uh, it wasn't like, no, I, respectfully, it wasn't like the Chris Rock special. Like, it wasn't like I had to like <laughs> wait a, sit wait a, down wait a minute. And, no, I don't I, know. I it wasn't an about. event where it was like everybody, was it? No. I, Did I, they have a I free think, show? It wasn't a free <laughs> show, but I think people were like looking forward to it. Or people wanted to see what people it was. People no, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I just haven't. I was in a I subway with service watching the beginning of Chris Rock because I was like, this is the Chris Rock. It's live. I got to. Yeah. And but. you and you didn't watch it either. So I so <laughs> last night I was going to okay, and I watched the preview of it, like the little one joke that they give you to like uh, to be like, oh, watch the rest of it. Was the preview motherfucker? <laughs> um, just yeah, the word. Well, it, 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 she did say it. Oh, okay, but it was about um, coming was- motherfucking soon. <laughs> On your motherfucking feed. Dropping motherfucking tonight. Motherfucking Monique. <laughs> <laughs> On motherfucking Netflix. So what happened? So you was about to watch it. I was about did. to watch it, but the joke that they played, it, it, I don't think it was a whole joke. And if it was a whole joke, then it didn't make me want to watch the whole thing because it wasn't, it just didn't. I don't think it was finished. And then I was just like, this is. The joke or the, the clip? She was talking about the joke. <laughs> I have a feeling it was maybe it was the clip to make you want to watch the rest to watch the hear the rest of the joke, mm-hmm. but uh, it wasn't that engaging for me enough for me to be like you know let me watch this hour long special yeah. to know what happened in the classroom. Okay, 
I have a few different feelings about this. Number one, <laughs> y'all ain't shit. That's number one. Y'all ain't watching. Just like it. I really wanted to talk about I, this. I really wanted to talk about I said, I could have talked about it on the last episode I just recorded. And I said, no, I'm going to wait for it to be all Negroes. You're supposed to put that in the podcast info. I should have told y'all yeah. to watch yeah. it. To watch it. We watch it yeah. I assume. We can just. I assume y'all spend- cared about comedy enough. What if we watch just movie? watch it now for the podcast? <laughs> yeah, we're not gonna do that. <laughs> so, yeah, just and just and just watch our faces. <laughs> A whole hour long reaction video. So I know, right? <laughs> so I think a lot of people issue with it was that she cussed the, like every other word, like mm-hmm. literally. Oh. Like this, not even like me just being like facetious. Mm-hmm. Like literally, every other word was motherfucker, nigga, <laughs> and or bitch. Like that's every other word. Mm-hmm. And and I felt like they feel like uh, some of the stories weren't <laughs> complete. Um, mm-hmm. So that was mm-hmm. that was kind of the issue. Also, uh, she came out of the closet, which is brave of her. Oh, yes. you know, at Respect. the end. I didn't know that. She came out, at least as bisexual, you know. Uh, She's married, right? She, she is. Said, oh, that's right. kind of what the joke uh, is about bisexual too. Bisexual don't hit the same. It's just like I know. I'm, I thought, I'm full. I thought she was Queen Latifah. Then I was like, oh shit. Well, no, nah, she's not Wanda Sykes, you know. But <laughs> she she is out there. She likes mm-hmm. vagina. That's what she's saying. She likes vagina. Mm-hmm. Um, damn. I wish y'all did. Y'all watch some more special? Well, listen, listen. I, mm-hmm. I mean, what. What struck me is that we're all comedians, right? Mm, speak people, a little bit closer to the mic. The, we're all comedians, and the people who have been complaining about the cussing, right? Cuss. That's how I know how much cussing it is. Like we're not church folk. That's exactly correct. Like, we're not. We're not part of like some Bible study, and we're like, oh my goodness, the Monique special was just so. Like these are people who hear cussing every night, and they're like, nigga, <laughs> it's a lot of cussing. So that's what lets me know that's a lot of cussing, and like, but, and that means. Like cussing to me is a lack of preparation because the more you, I feel like the more you do your jokes, the more you find the cussing unnecessary. And I think there's just a trend where like I feel like big name comedians who come who come and drop a special out of like after a long time, their special doesn't reflect, I guess, the just like the level that you would expect from like all the time you would think they would have for that special. Mm. Whether it's Chris Rock, whether it's Monique. And I didn't see Monique's special, but I just think sometimes there's specials where you'd be so excited and then it's like, oh, you kind of, it kind of seems like you whipped this together. Like, like, but you had time. Like, you had money, resources. Like, years. Years. To get your act together. Yeah. Yeah. No, nah, I mean, hey, man. That's what happens when you get the bag first, though. It's like. Well, because my nah, thing nah, was, nah, she nah. was asking for the 20 million initially mm-hmm. that Chris Rock and Chappelle was getting, mm-hmm. but um, the special showed us that <laughs> you shouldn't Maybe got... that was intentional. W- what you mean? Because she was like, I had to fight all this time. Now you niggas is going to get this. Get, well, got what, 25 grand? She should have got. She could have got. That's not even professional, though. <laughs> I don't know. You I know? haven't seen this, so I can't. I can't. Did y'all watch Marla, Marla Wayne's special? Yeah. No. Okay. Yes. Not the but you okay. know, just to kind of like, said it like <laughs> <laughs> when you said, I saw it. I like Marlon Special. What you thought? What you thought? Mm-mm. Okay. I don't, I don't want this edited out. Okay. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't <laughs> want to do the episode. But see, you can't. Then you can't have a conversation if we can't like. No. Okay, y'all like no, no, here's, no, right? no. Okay. No. No. Like, I I like. I'm just gonna be a hundred. Like I feel like I'm like, and you probably feel the same way. Like a extended member of the Wayans family. Right. Like, I have a lot of love for not only Marlon, whatever, so I see the Wayans, like, from a biased place. Right. And so, I think that Marlon's special was proof of how far he's grown in his journey as a comedian. And mm-hmm. It was by far his best special. It was. And I think if you're looking at Marlon, it's almost the same way you look at Chris Rock's special. I think those specials are connected to where those artists are in their career. Like Marlon is a icon and a juggernaut, but in stand-up comedy, he's still like newer in his journey than you would expect. And so that special to me was impressive, vulnerable, intimate, and he did a lot of things that you wanted to see in his earlier specials. Mm -hmm. With that being said, I wish it would have been structured not in and out of one Will Smith slap like, he used that to, like, tell a lot of dope jokes and, like, you know, just take stand-up to where it can go. I just, me, my taste-wise, I wish it could have been done in a way that just didn't keep coming back to the Will Smith, Chris 
rock slap and like like I just want to listen to you, Marlon. Like I, I I care every time he went back to talking about that. Like I cared less about that and more like his feelings on that and what that revealed about him as a person. So mm. like keeping it one thousand, I thought it was a great special. I wish it could have been structured where it didn't rely so much on the Will Smith Chris Rock. Slap. Gotcha. You, you wish he was uh, touching on different topics. Or it just not just that, but it, it, it's a catch twenty two because then it's like super timely, and then it's like, and, and as an artist, it's kind of like, damn, like you used one moment in order to spend an hour kind of talking about yourself and your feeling on the industry and your feeling on all this stuff, and it was about Marlon. So like part of it, like creatively, I'm like, you know, that's dope. I've never seen it, but then just like personally, I was like, I don't want to hear. It more. But I also watched it after Chris Rock special too. Oh, okay. I did too. What I think thought? that would have that would have had a different effect. What you thought, Jamie? Well, Marlon? Yeah, what you thought? <clears throat> she should don't watch nobody's shit. I do. I watch Chris Rock. Um, I I think what James said, he like hit a nail on the head, you know? Um, but I do think um because he is a Wayne's, I felt like he didn't have to do that, but the fact that he did do that, I, I loved it because I f- I have you know, getting into stand up, I've gotten I've gotten a lot of advice, right? And they honestly, have, like the best advice that I've I've gotten was, if you're not ready to be honest, you're not ready to be funny. Mm. And he was honest. I mean, yeah. he was fully honest to the point where you're you respected him more of like, yo, this is how I feel about Chris. This is how I feel about Jada. This is how I feel about Will. Right. And I'm using this time to say how I feel. Right. And on the same way, he wasn't disrespectful. Right. And I thought he did it the right way. You know, I, I thought it was a great special. Um, I didn't necessarily think like, um, I didn't go into it thinking it was all going to be about the slap. Right. You know, but at the same time, I, I was enjoying it. And I no one else is talking about the slap. Right. But, you know, to that extent, to you're just like, I'm in my own house like, yo. <laughs> yo yo you know what i'm saying and it's just the fact that like I, I respected that and it's just like the thing about stand-up it is it's it's about you being honest right and so it, it that's his 2023 special you know that's it next year it might be his his history his and he is he has whatever. more specials planned so like when you have <laughs> yeah. a deal like you know if we drop a special we, we don't know like right. that got to be the one you know <laughs> so like but him knowing he has other specials coming gives him the opportunity to be like, I'm just gonna sit in this. Yeah. Do y'all special. do y'all feel like specials were funnier back in the day? I do. Yeah. Speak on it, Keisha. No, I just like the past. I don't know how many that I've watched. It's kind of been like a chuckle or some. I feel like now there's a lot of clap worthy points in specials, but I want to laugh. Like I don't, and I also want you to make me think, but I want it to be funny. And I feel like a lot of specials I walk I've watched lately has been like clapping like oh okay they said something you know whether it's injustice or whether it's racism or sexism or whatever it is they're talking about but I feel like back in the day I remember I almost got kicked out of my dorm watching um the kings of comedy yeah and I had seen it like 10 times and every time I watched it the PA was like listen or not PA the (laughs) RA I'm thinking about on set she was like it's (laughs) quiet hours it's finals people are complaining about the noise in here me and my roommates in here dying laughing like and I feel like that feeling I don't always get when I watch specials these days. It's like, do you think a part of that is side note? I was an RA as well. Were you? <laughs> um, hey, and knocking on the door, you know it's like you keeping up too much noise. Five zero. <laughs> <laughs> you Shout was the police. I was. I was I RA. Snitching. Yeah. I mean, they got a snitch. Hey, they got the golf cart though. The My RA is <laughs> like me. I was doing all type of disrespectful shit. Um, <laughs> do you think it's because we're comedians though, and now we kind of judging shit harder? No. No, it's just no. not as funny, right? I think it's yeah. I think I, I if I could just uh inter- like ask a question, right? Go for it. Do you only watch black comics? No. Okay, I feel like there's a lot of white comedy that have me fucking crying. Yeah. Who? Who? What you mean who? Who? I like crying is strong. Yeah, I'm about to say who <laughs> have you crying? Okay. Bill Bill Burr is the only one that has me crying. And I wouldn't say crying for like literally. I don't but know. Anthony Justin is cr- my favorite. Okay, I fuck with Anthony Justin. I love Anthony Justin. He's the one I be having me crying. Um, you I like, like dark Bert's humor. new ones. I like dark humor. I like storytelling. Mm-hmm. Um, that's why you like Bert. That's why I like Bert. Yeah. yeah. Um, Tom Segura, he's nice. Um, I watch a lot of white comedy too. 
And I watched um, Ali Ali Wong. I like Ali Wong. I like Ali yeah, Wong. and then the one that she directed with the other guy, the Asian guy. His was really oh, good. His was his well written. Who? Is it Ronnie Chang or someone else? Um, I don't think he did anything with Ali. Oh, okay. No, Ali directed his. Ronnie Chang's? Nah, I think somebody else she's talking about. I had a show with her improv. She's like, I love that abortion bit. I was like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> what? You'll see it on my next what? special. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, man. I uh, cause I I'll be I'll be thinking about that when it comes to these specials, man. Sometimes I'll be like, do people put out specials because they think they're ready, or do people put out specials just because they want the bag? So okay, so there's a lot of one back in the day there wasn't so much comedy around. Mm-hmm. Like we're flooded with comedy. So I was talking to my friend about this, like. Was it the movie Waterboy where the dude was like, "You can do it," yeah, yeah, and yeah, like I'm that sure. blew up. Him saying, you can do it. Like, if somebody did that now, we'd be like, <laughs> like, but there's, but there's, no, there was nothing around. Like, it was like, you go to the movie or TV, but like now, literally, we can scroll our phone and like something might crack us up. Like, I feel like we're desensitized in a way to comedy where things were hitting harder back in the day because there wasn't competition. of other, We hadn't laughed all day before we watched that. We right. hadn't been scrolling our phone all day before we watched something or a special like you you did your thing you weren't watching shows on your phone like you went and watched reruns but it just wasn't comedy wasn't coming to your face and especially as comedians yeah your feed is reels and, and clips and if you follow a lot of comedians and even if you don't like there's always comedy available so now in order to get that same like knee slap and crying like like it has to be elite and even if it is elite it still may not make you laugh just because you've been laughing all day you've been like you've been laughing since seven in the morning like or just having comedy come at you since you opened your phone i think for me it's the opposite because i think because of so much content and because everybody's posting i think a lot of it isn't funny to me i think people Mm. laugh now at anything like you do something silly you would think about going viral it's like people are trying to go viral by doing the silliest things and a lot of that to me is, I think I, I love smart comedy and witty comedy. Mm-hmm. And I think now everything is like silly and like, it doesn't make me laugh. So I, and I think that that has kind of become a trend now where a lot of comedians or people in general or people off the inter, you know internet that are becoming comedians, no shade to anybody. Now it's like anything they think is funny and it's really, no, it's not. It's I not. I, I'm throwing but, shit. But to me it's like, but, but yeah, you can do this on Instagram and it's funny and then you get on stage and it's like, but that's not. It's not funny to me. So I feel like it almost is now a thing of like, I think the bar has unconsciously been lowered on what's funny. And so when I watch comedy now, I'm like, this is not really. So I'd like to say something, right? Go for it. Because I am one of those people who came from social media to who's now doing stand up, right? Mm -hmm. I wasn't, I wasn't shitting you. Oh, I'm I'm not (laughs) taking it like that. I I, I do just want to say that like, you know, you guys are like deep in the game. You know what I mean? Like from people who came from, uh, like social media to now doing stand up, it's like yeah, if 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 people were judging you the first year you did it, it'd probably be the same mm-hmm. amount. No, no, no. I'm not you saying that. By like, all means, you can come from any walk of life. I'm a computer engineer. I'm just saying that it needs to be fun. You know what I'm saying? That and I'm not saying for the first time you time. hit stage. Yeah, That's like, not, but d- I'm not saying that. I'm saying that I think because we are so like immersed in the Instagram comedy and the skits. I think that oftentimes on stage, to me, that stuff isn't funny. And I think that that's why I'm saying when I watch stuff now, I don't think I'm judging it much harder. I just think it's different now. Mm. And to me, it's not funny. To other people, there are plenty of people. People have millions of followers, and people are dying laughing at their skits. And I I might watch it, and and it's no shade. I'm not hating. I'm not like, oh, my God. But that's just not my... What I, what I find entertaining. I think what both of you guys are saying like kind of connects in a way. It's like, like there are to Jamie's point, there's a lot of newer comedians who like they're in their newer process of comedy, but that's this like generation of com- comedians who still post it. Like, yeah. like respect if you're, you're just new, you're in your year, but like, if you post it, you posted it. Like no one cares that's the true. amount of time, whatever, like, <laughs> that's true. like right. if you <laughs> showcase your comedy, that's true, yeah. it is now being showcased along with, all the other comedy. Yeah, yeah. you're in the we game post now. A clip, that, you might scroll and then see a Chappelle clip, a D-Ray mm-hmm. clip, but you in the game. So it's like, wherever you at in the game, I respect it. But once you post and put it out, like, because 
me and Justin, we was we wasn't always nice, but we we wasn't putting out the not nice material, right? You know, right. like but that's true. But 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 that also goes back to the specials. It's like when we go to specials mm. or our professionals, that's where we go to see the nicest, most yeah. professional, most tight set. Where it's yeah. like, yeah. show me why you're different than what I've seen on the phone. To your point, so it's like mm -hmm. when you go to a special, you go to see somebody who's like just on a different yeah. level, and I feel yeah. like some of these. Specials, you like, hey, you kind of reminded me of what I see on my phone. Yeah, yeah. that's the, the point. Yeah, because okay. yeah, I, I do be watching people's specials like, I shouldn't feel like I could do that better than you. You, <laughs> I, you shouldn't watch a comedian and want to do comedy. You shouldn't listen to a rapper and feel like you should rap. That's a fact. Yeah. That's, that's, that's why I got three mixtapes out. I said, these <laughs> niggas are trash. I Yo. Said, they could do it. I, I could, could I could definitely <laughs> drop some bars if they could do it. Exactly. I've definitely <laughs> thought that about like makeup artists. I could do that. I, I never. Side did. note, and when <laughs> I heard your music, trash. I didn't go rap. <laughs> I was I, like, I don't know if I could do that. I appreciate that, bro. <laughs> yeah, I'm surprisingly gifted when it comes to rapping. I'm gonna drop something again one of these days. But um, but I do appreciate yes. you you mention it like that because like when you do post it, it's it's like, hey, I'm ready. Yeah. You know, and that's one thing that I haven't done. And people are like, I want to see your comedy. I want to see your comedy. I want, you know, when are you going to post it? Like, this, this, and this. And it's just like, I'm not ready. You know? And that's because I'm taking a different approach into stand-up. Like, it's not it's not like, oh, I'm just going to host a show, have people come, make clips, and, and, and post it online. You know? Like, it's more so, like, I'm thinking of longevity. Yeah. You know? And I see, and I see the difference of, like, you know, when people are just throwing they're it's like a out. big Costco, and we all have our little sample aisle, like sections for our comedy, and people are just going around like sampling <laughs> your comedy, and they'd be like, mm, mm -hmm. "I like this," but if you put out some bullshit, they'd be like, "Unfollow." Right? IG, <laughs> IG, don't show me this again. Ah, uh, that's hilarious, bro. Hey, man, you killing it right now with the clips, though, bro. Yeah. You when know, it's you know, it's funny. I hate doing clips. I hate. You just hit hundred k. Yeah, I did. did. So it's working. Yeah. I did. Nah. <laughs> what yeah. was the deciding factor for you to be like, I got to start posting clips? Uh, because you're great. I appreciate the flowers you just gave me. You've always been great at crowd work. Like, that's a special skill that you've always had, bro. You come up with clever shit on the spot. I used to see you killing at the union and all these other different spots, bro. So it makes perfect sense for me for you to do crowd work and post this shit. But what was the deciding factor for you to be like, let me start posting these goddamn clips? People I knew who were absolutely not funnier than me selling out shows and having a gang of followers. Yeah. <laughs> like, I just, it was literally like get bitter, get mad, or do something. And I sat, and I had sat in the other option for like a month or two, and I was just like, "Well, this is." And also, it was around the time I remember I literally started mid September. I mean, so like this is, I'm I think I was extra motivated too. I mean, this was dying like Teddy, Jack, David. You know, it's just like if they like I'm over here bitter about stuff like they're not even alive no more like mm. how can I not go hard when like people don't even have they don't even have no chance like especially David yeah, they, that I remember David David didn't want to do none of that internet stuff he's a comedian he's a writer but he he said he put all his pride to his side and he was doing his vlogs and all that stuff and it was like if David at an older age with a family can make that make that decision like what am I What's what's my real reason outside of pride and ego? And to your point, I was like, man, I can, I do, yeah, I I'm good at freestyling. Like I can, it, it's literally just like the gym. Like you go into the gym, just bring, just 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 pay a cameraman. Yeah. And it, what's funny is what I notice is when I know that there are cameras there, you take your sets more seriously. Mm. And it's almost like a mini taping. It's almost a little bit more fun because you're like, man, it might be 10, 11 people here, but this is for the gram. Oh. So like while I might go while I might have just like phoned it in or made it a little workout set and I don't care. Hey, if there's four people or four hundred people, if my cameras are up, I'm performing. Like, gotcha. I'm performing because I know it's not about the it's not about them. I need this to look good on the on the clip so that I can get it out to the to the people. And then that started helping my writing because some of my clips it was just like man I wanted to say something about this. I wouldn't even have the full joke like. I got clips that got like half a million views where literally as the cameraman was setting up, I was like, I just going to say something about Kanye and Black Lives Matter and what he's been talking about. I'm just typing it up on my phone. I just go out there and I'm just like, but I have this like 
passionate about what I'm talking about because I'm like, even though this is new, like the cameras is up. Like I don't want to, I don't pay this man two hundred dollars. Like <laughs> yeah, that's why I was gonna ask you. Like who who's editing your clips? Are you editing or the dude or your uh, cameraman also editing? Nah. So shout out to Michael Turner who does a Don't Tell shows. Okay. Mm -hmm. He linked me with uh, a clip guy who then started working with Trevor Wallace, and now that clip guy. Who I was doing my stuff is now working with Matt Rife. So oh shit, he's unavailable. He got a full time job. Yeah, 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 yeah. Matt killing it right now. Right. So he, but, but but before I went to New York, Matt's clip guy was working with Trevor Wallace and me and Brendan Schaub. So I went low key, not like like the white like to the white homies low key like. Just share the information. Yeah, because whatever. niggers aren't doing shit. No, I'm joking. Nah. <laughs> but I will say that, like. Do you guys not know how to edit? I do. I edit my. Don't say it like that. I, yeah. I, I mean, First yeah. Of all. <laughs> I mean, I'm just. I, I edit. You. I edit my stand up clips. My homeboy Lee, who's my producer on this, he edits the podcast clips. Okay. Yeah. And then my sketches and stuff like that, I used to edit. I need to take an editing class. I know my, my life would change if I, if I would edit more stuff, but. In the meanwhile, I just be yeah. paying people. Afion like, told you me guys. that a lo long time. Oh, oh, oh so you sure. just out here editing? Are oh, you an editor? <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, I don't, I don't enjoy it. You know, like so that's the thing. Like I know how to do it because I know what I want and I know how to get it. And and I want to know how to make sure I get it done the way I want it. You know. Yeah. Um. So I learned how to do it obviously from coming social media. That's how I learned how to edit videos. Uh, when it comes to like these type of clips, you know, the whole like vertical thing, I really enjoy. Um, I really enjoy because I edited the like a podcast I was on before and I did like a three tier. And I thought that was really fun. Like, and it's just I don't know, like I, I enjoy it, but I just don't. It just takes me forever. It's not fun, yeah. but it's a yeah. talent, and when you need to use it, you yeah, need it. like you have to do everything yeah. out here. I directed. I'm not directed. I bur I uh, edited Baraka Flock of Flame, like my biggest <laughs> thing, like, and it was like, but like I didn't enjoy it, but like it just had to be done. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of how I do the editing. But yeah, the clips, man. Like, it's funny too, cause the algorithm is different with everybody. Like my crowd work clips don't. Some of them go big, but some of them be like real just mid like not not a lot of views I, I honestly feel like my people want more material you know what somebody mike eshack he did this podcast too he told me the same thing he said his material is that's what really hits it ain't his crowd work shit and see that's my problem i haven't been posting any of my material all of my stuff is being crowd work stuff and so none of that stuff has really been hitting but my yeah. reaction videos i've had a few of them hit yeah you know so yeah Can but I it's just about i just feeding it like Sometimes just anything. I need to react. I want to do it all. Like, yeah. Can I ask you guys a question? Yeah, go for it. This is a this is a hey, this is an open conversation. <laughs> okay. Um. So when it comes to posting, and you, we're out of time. So I listen. Now, <laughs> <laughs> nah, I'm joking. You must be a comedian. Good talk. Good talk. Nah, nah, go for it. My bad. When it comes to posting your material, how do you guys feel about that? So for me, that was also part of my clip whole deep side enlightenment. Over here. We be holding on the material for a special, right? That's a, that's a fact. When you, when I got my special, I shot it and then it didn't come out for a year. Sometimes when you get a special, maybe it's six months. Now there's some, like Roy Wood, when he shot his special, it came out in like two weeks, three weeks. So like, if you can get a deal like that, it's worth it. But like, you might be holding on to material for a special. Say you get a, say, say, Everything works out, and you get a special three months from now. All right, sign the deal. You get a special. Now they've got a venue for you that you're going to now shoot in another two months. So now we're, five, we're now five months out from here. You shoot in five months. And now they decide that your special will come out, God willing, in another three months. And now it's eight months from now. Like, at the best case scenario. So jokes that are hitting right now, that are referencing things right now, that just mean more right now, if if you were even to get a special, no one's going to see it for another eight, nine months. And it's like, and when you do drop that special, unless you're already trending and you're very popular, the demand to watch that special is not going to be that large. So people are going to watch that special and what, what may be... And, the, the the maybe a big producer sees it and wants to give you a development deal or bring you in for a meeting maybe you get a thousand to 
ten thousand new followers, maybe. And like I've dropped shit on I I me and Justin will tell you, being on TV doesn't mean don't mean shit. Followers rush in. Nah. So and that's another thing. So with all those factors, you get more bang for your buck from your stand up online. Mm-hmm. I have I've I've gotten about fifty thousand followers since since September. I've been I I got crazy TV credits and I was stuck at fifty four thousand to dipping whatever. So it's like none of that. If it's about increasing your visibility, increasing your brand, your following, the t- the special late night route really doesn't advance you like it did in the nineties or two thousands. But and even with the late night, they late still, night really, they, they yeah. still go have to drop the shit on YouTube. It's still basically a clip. That's the thing. Yeah. yeah. Even your special, your special is gonna come out, and then you're gonna clip that shit yeah. and put it back online. So cut out all the middleman and just put it online. Bring up your mm-hmm. following there, and then it's like now you got people like a Mark Norman or a Sam Morrill or people where like they can drop it on YouTube because they're so big online or Matt Rife or like. They're, all the people are going to go wherever they go. But if, like, HBO Max was to give me a special tomorrow, like, even if it drops, only people who care about that special are the people who already cared about me. Yeah. And, maybe, and maybe a few people who were, you know, pulled in by their marketing, which they're not doing some heavy marketing, per, per, like, campaign for somebody who's not uh, Dave Chappelle, Chris Rock, big name. So you just realize all the outside of the clout and the ego and, like, and just the swag of maybe having a billboard or saying you have a special, it's really not moving you or getting you tickets or, you know, it's not going to, unless somebody sees that special who's like a Will Packer and just like, I love this guy. Like, which happened with Sam J? Kenya Barris saw her Netflix special and was like, I fuck with her. I'm going to start putting her in shit. Yeah. So it's like, but I've, I've had, Kenya Barris reached out to me th- through clips. Damn. Not through... You know, like I've had now, I've gotten more meetings through my clips because the cl- people are on on their phone more than they're on yeah. their TVs. That's a fact. Mm-hmm. Like people thought that I was that I didn't even that I just wanted to write and I didn't even want to like you know be on camera and do do stuff. But then they saw all these clips and then it's like, oh, he's funny. Oh, this dude, could, and it's, I, it's almost like a reminder of who you are. Yeah. But if you just sitting holding on to your stuff, yeah. Mm-hmm. And you working? People I need to get know. better. I need to get better at posting the clips, bro. I'm even yeah, like finna start right. taking more like stand up gigs just so I can have like more clips. You know, it made me take more stand up gigs because yeah. now you got your gigs where right, you want to tape me, them and me, your gigs where you want to work on your shit. Exactly. And let me be clear when I say take more stand up gigs because I always want to do stand up gigs. <laughs> take more stand up gigs for lesser money. OK, because I had a certain price point And if the clubs wasn't meeting that price point, I was like, I'm not doing their club. Mm. Now I'm like, well, fuck. The clips is what's matter to really build my fan base and my brand. So now I had this is recent shit. I'm like, let me start doing these clubs. For a lesser price. If it's a good club that looks good on camera. Yeah, oh, okay. There you have it. That's true. I don't want to do chuckle butt fuck yeah. in Idaho. Or, uh, yeah, like, because if you're not going to get nothing out of it and it's just going to be a whatever, but if it looks good or, you know, like, or you can build your material, yeah, but I still am not a fan of going to shitty clubs. Just for <laughs> but see, I'm at a point where I'm like, as long as there's a crowd, I'm going to just be funny and take them clips and post the shit online. Yeah. So that got me to thinking about you, Keisha, Miss Keisha, Miss I'm not on Instagram. <laughs> I'm on the gram. I'm just uh. Miss I'm not. Po- what's your what? What's the goal though? Is it is it stand up or is it actress? What? It's it's both. But I would say if I it's both. It, it's both. And I want my goal is for my stand up to open the door for acting. Um, but I'm. I understand the advantage of Instagram, like everything what you're saying, because I was listening like, oh, I usually don't post a lot of my clips because also, and also where I'm at in my comedy career is like, I have about about an hour of material, not an hour special, about an hour of material, right? So I'm like, damn, do I post everything on Instagram? And then you come to my show and then what? You know what I mean? So that's where I was always kind of like. I'll be paranoid about that. I'll be thinking about that too. Because Lonnie hit me like, yo, can I post this from, you know, and I was like, how, and, and then how much are you posting, right? Because like, I don't want to get The full clip. Yeah. <laughs> the, full, um, the full joke. But that does make sense because I did post a clip from um, an old, and it, it looked good from Revolt. I did a Funny AF. And that was probably like my first viral clip, right? And so I was like, oh, I need to post more of these. Um, I try. I struggle with Instagram because it's like 
ah, I really want to just do the craft. I want to be on stage. I want to act. I don't want to do the skits. I don't want to do, I don't, I don't want to have to do that. You have some of the best actors that don't even have an Instagram page or they post to post, you know what I mean? And obviously I'm not at that point, but that's what my goal, that's where I want to be. Like, I don't want to have to do the clips, but I understand the benefit of it. Um, like Michael B. Jordan doesn't have to drop reels. Exactly. You know? He like, doesn't. Exactly. So Damon Jr. doesn't have to drop reels. You said Damon Jr.? Yeah. Yeah. He be in my DMs like, yeah, man, I think, I'm like, bro, you're, you're fine. <laughs> so, yeah, it's like, I get it. I understand the benefit of it. I understand growing your platform, you know, and all of those things. But um, that's tough because I, I really love stand-up. So it's not that I want to do one over the other. I do think when I think longevity as a woman – and I think about like being on the road versus having a show at, that I shoot at Warner Brothers and I come home to my family by maybe eight, nine o'clock at night, depending on how long we shoot. You know what I mean? That is something that I think about. Yeah. Um, but I can't, yeah. I can't really pick Comments one up together. What, what you thinking, Jamie? What's on your mind? I just want you guys to understand how it all co- like coincides together. Like how successful do you want to be in stand up without social media? How successful do I want yeah. to be without it? Yeah, I like, want to be very successful without it. Like, <laughs> Me too. I, I want I... to never have to post but a, the, a skit. But the thing, but the thing is, how would that how would that path look? You would headline for who? You know what I mean? Like it's almost like you'd have to figure out a different plan, if without trying to do social media. Yeah, like I want to be more on stage. Like without I want trying to do acting, there. you know, like it all coincides together. Right. You get a TV show, then now you have credits to now you're getting put on, like put on mm-hmm. at like the comedy cellar. You know what I'm saying? It it, it all coincides, like yeah. social media, acting, stand up. Like it, you ha- like in order to be like the full on, like let's say you want to be a list star, it's really like. The way the day, like the like nowadays are, it's like you have to be all of the above. And now, and if you don't like to do social media, this is when you hire someone to do it for you. Mm-hmm. I definitely am trying to get to a place to just hire somebody. Yeah, to just, like do my shit. But I mean, I feel you. Like like IG is like a necessary evil. It is. Yeah, yeah. I is. I be going yeah. on there just to post something and be on there for two hours. Like <laughs> like, mm-hmm. and there's nothing. And I honestly, I wish I could like not use. I I would be a happier, healthier, mentally <laughs> right. stable. I individual. take breaks. Well, people like, wonder oh. why I unfollowed everybody at one point. Like that's also for my own mental health. Also, yeah. you know what I'm saying? That's because it's like I'm not trying to see everybody's shit. I'm trying to focus on my yeah. own stuff. Yeah. You know, we are so consumed. Think about it. Twenty four hours a day. I heard. Now I know. I'm, I didn't I'm, even know that was just, a thing. You, but you're still looking at somebody's right. Like yeah. think about the. You got your email. You got your phone calls. Your text messages. We barely spend the time with people in person. You scrolling all day, taking in somebody else's life, somebody else's thoughts, somebody else's, whether it's jokes or if it's good stuff, bad oh, stuff. Oh, and their life looks better than yours. And that's yeah. where I be like, not I even really just want to not be on. But then it's like you get opportunities. People will DM you like, hey, can you come do the show? So if you get off social media. So, so it, like you said, it's a necessary evil, but. I will, I will say for spots, IG is damn near unmatched. I, I, it, in yeah. New York, like, I would just. You do a show. I ain't never heard of that show, but the show reposts you. I just go to that show. Yeah, and what then I DM the person like, like, "Hey, yeah, I might send yeah, a quick yeah. little clip." I get a lot of I book a lot of shows like that too. So that's what I'm saying. It's, yeah, it's a yeah. necessary evil. I just hate it. Like, ah, uh, can I get off of here? Yeah. It is the whole energy thing is very true though. It's like like you said, the email, the DMs, all the stuff. It's like, man, at the end of the day, it's like, damn, I don't even want to be out. I have no energy left, and all I've been doing is texting back, you know? Right. Like, it's just, like, I'm so drained. And then it's, like, you add, it, you try to add editing on top of something like that. It's just, like, you're fucking brain dead after that. It's just, like, man, there has to be an easier way. I haven't figured it out, you there know? Is, that, well, that's what I learned. There isn't. Well, you know, yeah. so, <laughs> this, is my, this is my last thought. This is my last thought to talk on, on that particular point, which is, my fear is I'm gonna post my material online. Mm-hmm. The benefit of that is I'm building my fan base, and I got people coming to my show like you, like you were saying, Keisha. But my fear is HBO calls and they're like, "All right, we want it, we want your special," and I'm like, I, "I gave away all my good shit on these clips, so now whatever material I have is like me, it's like mediocre. It's like B C list jokes." And yeah. now I'm like, well, if I would have had all my best shit from the clip. And then uh, there's a part of me also that I might say, fuck it. 
I'm going to just still still take all my best jokes and yeah. still do it on the special. That's what I was going to ask. What's your rule of thumb for that? Do you still use the jokes that you post? Or so are you like, that's to me, it? to me, you can't reuse special jokes, mm. you know, but there's jokes in Kevin Hart seriously funny that he did in his Comedy Central half hour. Right. Mm. But it's like, it's a different platform. You know, okay. I think I, you know, so I think it's special to special, but my, but not like internet is internet like that's not tv you know like mm-hmm. but, but i do wonder you feel like when people see it on the internet and then they're gonna watch it on tv like it'd be to me I, my hope is that it's like your favorite rapper doing your favorite doing doing yeah. one of your favorite songs yeah. and and what people and hopefully ideally your material has somewhat grown from whatever they saw you on youtube ig to your special maybe there's an extra tag mm. some kind of like growth in the joke but like damn i forgot i, I, I definitely just blanked <laughs> <laughs> we were saying about using the material like oh, people oh. still want to see so it. me and roy wood were talking about this he just hold on he just dropped a new special roy wood nah oh, okay so anyways you and roy um, wood was talking about it i'm i have a lot of like the what i try to release online is observational and timely jokes and like, but there's a lot of personal shit that I have not put online, mm. been sitting on, you know, like my kidney transplant material, like, mm, like right. talking about hood, hood adjacent. She like, just laughed at yeah, that's I don't know why. why. Don't know Dark why. humor. I, that's why I, she I like don't. Anthony Jeselnik. You know, like. Your pain I, makes her giggle. <laughs> yeah. Like, or even like the summer of all our homies dying. Like I got joke. I got mad jokes about death and stuff like that. And it's like. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stand this up comedy. I, <laughs> this is how it works. This is what happened when I just let anybody fucking <laughs> come on. Hey, you. Death, <laughs> hilarious. Um, but like, so a lot of my clips, if you notice, they're like COVID or like, or what one of the, the secrets too is, say you got a fire old joke, but you got a crappy clip of it. Do that old joke today i need to do that mm-hmm. i got like i got jokes that were old and like but i did it like this year and that people were like they don't know it's old yeah. so like repurpose old stuff but like observational stuff like if i'm going to talk about uh angel reese and uh doing this stuff right there's yeah. no real super personal take that's not going to be that much like going to be like some earth shattering joke about that yeah. so put it out right like, see i think like, a lot of my material stuff. is personal yeah you gotta um, you gotta you gotta you, so you gotta then be I'm thinking like, about that a little bit more if i put it out you know yeah. like the clip that i did put out that went viral i don't use that joke anymore at all like maybe i could at one point but it's not mm-hmm. something if i got a show tonight that's never even coming to my mind to do that joke so some stuff now is like but then I have some. It's like a catch me too. I have some it. stuff that hit, and I be like, "Damn, I do want to post this." I didn't. But then wanna... it's also like I'm, I use that a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes you gotta just take one of your babies and just sacrifice <laughs> them. I didn't want to. I I took forever to post the joke about me uh, not knowing if my pullout game was good or I can't have kids. Oh, mm-hmm. oh, yeah. I that had been killing for a long time, but I was like, "No, nah, I'm gonna that shit good. I'm gonna save it." And then I finally yeah. did it on the don't tell, and it's four point three million. I need so to it's like sometimes tell. it's like you hold you might be holding on a, a couple million. And I thought about that when Lonnie <laughs> hit me about. It, I was like, ah, I should probably let her post it. And then I was like, ah, and I was on the road at the time and I was using it. And then it's also like, but not that versus the number of people that's gonna see it on the universe, the number of people that's gonna come to the show that may have seen the clip to be like, I saw that already. It's probably not that great, right? You know, it's a greater number of people that's gonna see it there. So I do. It's it's just yeah. It's, it's really like, a win win. If if your if your if your clip goes viral, that means a lot of people liked it. So they won't be mad if they if, if they, they heard it again. again. If yeah. it didn't go viral, no one saw it. <laughs> so okay, so it. then you, you know what? Yeah, Low key, yeah. I think that's I'm part of my fear too. Like, I think it. I think part of my fear is like I post a joke that I think is fired. It has been killing, and, and then it, it don't, don't hit, and I'm gonna be like, "Well, damn." Oh, oh no, it's gonna happen. Yeah, see, that's gonna kill. Like me. when you, that's gonna hurt yeah. my soul. The funny thing <laughs> about clips and reels is you have this excitement, like you're dropping an album. Yeah. Every time you drop a clip, you're like, "Ooh, this gonna be the one to set it off. It's gonna set it off." Yeah. It'd be at like two thousand at the end of the day. That's, that's <laughs> happened. There's one that I was like, mm, I don't really think this is gonna do well, but I needed to just post something. I was in the in the habit of posting consistently, and then that one did better than one that I thought. That I was like proud to post. Like I'm about to post this one, and it was like, yeah, that's yeah. how it always is. They so. wanted to hear more. Like, what's the rest of it? What happened after that? And I'm like, oh, 
so, and it was a terrible. Flip. You're like, so the internet doesn't <laughs> like my new material. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? So I used to pride myself on not doing topical humor. Like I used to pride myself, like, no, nah, mm-hmm. I'm talking about myself. I'm talking about my stories. Yeah. But it's almost like, just for the sake of clips, I need to start talking about topical stuff. Like yeah. the fact that I didn't. You knew her name. I didn't know her name. I just knew this motion. I knew the basketball Angel. player girl mm-hmm. did that. But what's her name again? Angel, Angel Reese. Reese. Angel Reese. See, I didn't know her name. I need to be in there. I need to be a part of the culture. That's what I like about you, though, James. You always in the culture, bro. Like, you're, yeah. like, tapped in. You've always been tapped in. I mean, from fashion to knowing who people are, he's tapped in. This is some true shit. Yeah. So that's why I've always, because I know you want to, I know acting, you love acting, but me personally, what I, what I always felt that one of your superpowers is if you had, like, your... Whatever the hip hop version of the Daily Show is, mm. you know, whatever that is, where you could talk about the whatever that's popping in, in current events in pop culture, but from your perspective, I feel like, it, but I told Hasan Minaj the same shit. Like before he got the Daily Show, mm-hmm. I knew like your superpower is like touching on these, like being a host and, and politics and all that type of stuff. Like I knew that was the thing, like, what he was great at and i feel mm. like that's your same thing too man like mm-hmm. you able to see observe what's going on in the culture and able to flip that shit yeah. just watch a lot of i think that's a good part <laughs> of hosting too yeah like i think that's a good thing when you host a lot because it gives you an opportunity to talk about the current events and stuff like that and you don't even have to get to your material as much versus if you got 10 minutes and you know what i'm saying mm. so i think that's a good thing that's why i was like i need to get a room consistently and i, I also think though like that's a la thing as someone who's been in New York for like four months, uh, I think out here we're so we're so it's like showcase sets. We have all our jokes about ourselves because you mm-hmm. get you get a good two five minutes on yourself. That you know somebody that's a pilot, it's a TV mm-hmm. show, yeah. and so in our sets are like ten minutes, eight minutes at the most, twelve fifteen minutes, and so you don't have the the time the time to talk about current events because you're like yeah. yo i'm up here and i gotta do my thing and these yeah. people don't know me and they gotta know who keisha is who james is i can't give five minutes talking about women's college basketball or weather or stuff like that but those are just as funny and like things mm-hmm. that like people laugh at yeah yeah i don't know Dance face. No. <laughs> <laughs> Jamie's like, can I ask you guys a question? (laughs) Jamie, what you thinking? Um, I I guess like two things. One, I feel like when it comes to like uh, reusing your jokes, like on stage that went viral, I don't see anything wrong with it. I feel like I've seen it. I've been to a lot of shows and I've and I'm fans of a lot of people, so it's like I I hear the same joke. Mm -hmm. And I think um, maybe because I'm also like a writer as well. It's like I also like to see how you're placing the jokes in between different jokes. You know, because that can change the joke, you know, and you have different tags and stuff like that. So it's it's like essentially it's the same joke, but the way you're placing it into a story can change it, too. Mm-hmm. So um, I don't really see anything wrong with it, especially if it's a great joke. You know, like it, it like you said, it's like your artist's favorite song. You know, um, I think if 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 the uh, club promoted the clip. Maybe not use that joke for the club that you're going to that mm-hmm. night, but like other than that, you know, like I've seen plenty of plenty of comedians reuse the same jokes, but they're placed in a different way. It's not the whole set; it's just a joke. But you are also a comedian. I feel like comedians are sometimes cooler with or understanding of like other comedians repeating the joke yeah. because of the process, whereas other people be like, "Hey, man, that's I heard that. I heard that because yeah. we know, like I know damn near everybody's." Set and even if I don't know your whole set, I know yeah. some jokes, right? And there's comedians that, to your point, I like to hear the joke, no matter how many times I hear mm-hmm. it, it's still funny to me. Mm-hmm. But like James is saying, for somebody who's not, because before I started doing comedy, comedy just happened as a dare. It was never a part of my dream, my plan, no nothing. Somebody just dared me to do an amateur night, so I hadn't studied it, didn't know much about it. I literally, I was talking to Tony Rock, like, so I got a show tomorrow. Shit, I got to come up with some new jokes. And he was like, "What?" And I thought you had to tell <laughs> new jokes every single time hey, you hit the stage. Hey, me too. <laughs> so like my I first know. three shows, I was writing full new <laughs> sets. Like, so yeah, somebody watching, they do want to hear because they think the same thing. And I'd be laughing like that nigga been telling them jokes for this past eight and a half years, but <laughs> they do think that. So it is different for a comedian to watch the clip versus somebody who is, you know, just an audience member 
watching it and then seeing it again. You know what I wanted to I wanted to uh, ask y'all this question: What y'all do when you feeling undervalued in like entertainment? Do y'all ever feel undervalued? Ooh, this, this interview just went to a different level. <laughs> <laughs> okay, ta- Justin's Black Table Talk. <laughs> How y'all, I mean, do y'all ever feel undervalued or you feel, or, or, or what y'all? What? Why don't you I answer your question first? You said you want me to answer it mm-hmm. first? <laughs> all right, Jamie. Okay, <laughs> turning the tables on my shit. New co-host. I know, right? <laughs> She's like, why don't you answer? <laughs> so this is, this is where I got to. I used to, um, I used to have a, a huge chip on my shoulder, I would think, because I know how talented I am. I did a lot of shit first out of my peer group or I was early. You know, when it comes to like going viral and booking TV shows and booking movies and stuff like that. And so, yeah, there was a part of me that was like, you know, why am I not bigger? Like, why am like more people not recognizing what I have to offer? Because I'm like, don't y'all see what the fuck I done did? I'm the star of this. I'm on that. Like, why the fuck I'm not? Why I'm not doing late night shows? You know what I'm saying? Why the Breakfast Club not having me? Why you see what I'm saying? Like I'm Why am I not a regular at a comedy club? Why am I not a regular at a comedy club? We won't say the name. We'll just but continue. True shit. You know what I'm saying? It's like here I am on CBS for the last six years. Why am I not? Oh, you know what burns me? Bruh. The improv, Hollywood improv. I was not trying to be specific. No, no fuck all this. <laughs> Hollywood improv literally has my video on their marquee. Like, they have, like, a <laughs> montage of comedians, like, famous comedians that performs at the improv. Can't get booked. I can't get booked. Do you have a manager? I do. You have a manager, yeah? Comedy manager or acting manager? I'm about to say. That, I know, right? <laughs> but I want, and I want to be clear, she ain't answered this goddamn question yet. <laughs> now, let me finish answering my shit that you asked me to answer. <laughs> so, oh, God damn it, I don't know what the fuck you think this is. So, <laughs> so, so... So there was a part of me that felt some type of way about that. Then, in my evolution and maturity, mm. I got to a point where I said, you know what? You know, the rooms I'm supposed to be in, I'm being. The people I'm supposed to meet, I'm going to meet. Um, and these no, any no's that I feel like I'm getting is God leading me to where he ultimately really wants me to Rejection be. Rejection ain't nothing but redirection. 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 Amen. Reje- rejection Amen. is God's protection. You know what I'm saying? So that's, that's where I'm at. But yeah, I'm human and I do have those moments when I'm like, damn. So when I even said earlier, like, yeah, you're looking at people Instagram, you're like, damn, they like better than yours. I'm thinking about, no, their life probably isn't better. But what I'm saying is, is like they probably perform at some clubs I may want to perform at. They may have more followers. They may be headlining. You know what I'm saying? They might be on a movie set or a TV set. And you're like, damn, like what the fuck? Like, did I? I personally be thinking to myself, I'm like, I did everything right and everything wrong at the same time. Like, I did it the right way. I became the star of a TV show. I was a series regular. We got in the game as the industry changed. We did. That's exactly correct. And so here I was going viral on YouTube, but being a a YouTube comedian was looked down upon at the Mm -hmm. same time. So I was like, well, let me get off YouTube and focus. Let me go book 21 Jump Street, the movie. You you did YouTube to get to TV. Exactly. And now it's like, do YouTube just to have a career and be famous. To get the bag. (laughs) And have a career. You you might get a bigger bag on YouTube than the TV route. Yeah. Yeah. But no, bro, we're 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 like so mirrored. Like we watch Donald Glover make sketches online, get picked up to TV and blow up. Like, yep. Yep. And so. I, I do I do Baraka Flocka and I'm and, and I'm doing well online, but then I got a TV pilot and I was like, well well then fuck the internet I did it, like exactly and I and, and both me and him should have just kept on doing it, but the industry we grew up observing, you get recruited into TV and film and you stay there you don't mm-hmm. keep on doing. <clears throat> You know, like you don't you don't make it into the league, but be like, I gotta do my twenty four hour runs. Like, no, like <laughs> absolutely, because even me, I know people look at me like this nigga was on CBS. Why is he doing reaction videos? You know, I've had like my homegirls be like, Justin, like we got to get you back on TV because even they still like they're looking down on the internet. You know, it's like, mm-hmm. but I'm seeing it as we were talking about Instagram. It's like a necessary evil, yeah. Too because at the same time. I started doing reaction videos and I went up 15,000 followers on Facebook. So it's because like. At one point it was like, oh, you're an Instagram comedian or oh, you do 
casting directors didn't want to see the people from Instagram. And now it's turned into that's all they care about is how many followers you have. Yep. Not even if you do well at this audition. Just Go for it, Jamie. Missed question, no answers. Go for it. <laughs> Do you guys have a manager? I know. I do have. I do have. I do have a manager. No, yeah. That made me laugh. Like, <laughs> of course, but yeah, my, has a my man. My, I know, right? I'm like, you know, who you talking to right now? Uh, my <laughs> management. <laughs> I know. You be trying to be humble, then motherfuckers pull you out your your humility. Uh, you have representation, but sometimes you, you can't my, be humble. Right? My manager does not. They don't really represent me for stand up. So you, that 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 was a question I. Uh, that was a question I was trying to get to because I hear that, you know, the improv is very political. Mm-hmm. And I feel like that's why I asked that because, you know, a friend of mine who she straight up is like, look, I got passed and I'm not on no shows, you know, and it's like the people who are who are on the weekly shows and stuff. It, it, it's political and they have comedic managers. Right. You know, so that was the only reason why it, it wasn't like me trying to be like, oh, you know, because I don't have a comedic manager either. You know, so it's not me trying to do that. You do. You do, Queen. You just ain't met him yet. That's right. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I just hear about certain clubs just being very political. Mm-hmm. So what y'all do, though, when y'all feeling yeah. when y'all feeling down? Like what, what have y'all had to tell y'all self like during the down moments? Like what, what y'all tell y'all self like keep going? It's going to be all right. <laughs> You know, do y'all say yeah. fuck the industry? Like, what what y'all telling y'all selves? Can I just say something before before we get into this question? I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm just fuck your feelings. I know. Fuck your feelings. Fuck your feelings. <laughs> go for it. Go. No, what I was gonna say is we that we out of time for real this time, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> And thank you for tuning in. No, I'm joking. <laughs> go, go. So one thing I just wanted to say is like uh, when we overthink about what we should be posting, what we shouldn't be posting, like this, that, and through the industry, what people looking at casting directors, all this stuff, right? I feel like one thing that's a great thing that we have is being under the umbrella as a comedian. You can do whatever you want. You can say whatever you want. It doesn't matter. You're a comedian. You mm-hmm. get you get a pass. Right. Mm-hmm. If you were just a sole like actor, you know, like they'd be like, oh, my God, I can't believe they said that, you know, like they can get canceled. You know what I'm saying? And in, in, in terms of like a bigger scale, think about 50 Cent. Right. He is he is a mogul straight up, just like Diddy. Mm-hmm. He doesn't like to be referred to as a mogul. He only likes to be referred to as a rapper because he can get away with everything he does online as a rapper Mm -hmm. whereas diddy can't do that he can't troll niggas online he's a mogul Mm -hmm. 50 is a mogul too but it's the way he's branding himself he's like i'm a rapper you know what i'm saying and i feel like at the end of the day like if you put comedian first you can get away with everything and you don't have to overthink it you know, it's funny. I would, me not p- seeing myself as a comedian first is how I get over those moments of feeling undervalued. I think that if you put all your eggs into the one basket, of especially stand-up comedy, it's very easy to find yourself feeling sad, underwhelmed, unfulfilled, because it's just like the lowest level of, one of the lower levels of entertainment. There's so many people who want to do it, who get paid the least. On any given night, they might just bump you for somebody with more credits. Uh, you you know, so, yeah, for me, one of the things I always remember is that I just do a bunch of things. So if one thing is yeah. slowing down or I'm being undervalued in one place, I do other things. <laughs> so if they're hating on me on the writing side, I actually do stand-up. If I, if I'm struggling with auditions, I do stand up and write and produce and play golf and there's just other things. Yeah. So, but I, I think in general, just focus on family and just the blessings of how far you've come. Cause ambition is like a double edged sword. You're always looking up at what you haven't done because that's, those are the goals. And if the more focused you are, you're always focused on what you haven't done because you're trying to do it. But sometimes you have to step back and look back and realize, like, we've all, everyone in this room, we've done things that other people haven't, who, like, they would, like, there's, we we, we complain because we haven't, we don't get booked as often. That's really our complaint. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) We don't get booked as often, but we can do a show. You can 
go you can call somebody and if you don't get up tonight you'll get up tomorrow somewhere yeah. like you can find somewhere to perform there's people who hate themselves because they didn't have the courage to even try yeah. and like and they really they they really are like hurt inside or like just for everything you want to do there where you're at somebody would love to do it like bro like i always i love doing this podcast because it reminds me how similar a journey me and Justin have had as far as like TV credits and success versus like popularity. And just, I, I honestly feel like me and Justin uh, are both kind of undervalued in the comedy scene for what we've accomplished and what we've done over our, our entire catalog. And so when you're paying attention to that, because one thing Justin does as well is Justin's a very supportive person online. Mm -hmm. And I know partly it's because of who he is, but he's also showing people what they're not doing for him. <laughs> yeah, it's a little, I guess so, yeah. No, yeah. no, I do it I do it too. And it's yeah. not like a, I kind of feel bad, but then I don't because at the end of the day, you're still being a great person. But it doesn't matter how you arrived at doing something good for somebody else. And because so, I, I do think I, I'm going to do for you what nobody did for me. Yeah. Type type mentality. Like Justin's going to be like, yo, fucking Chattanooga, go see James. Yeah. If nobody else yeah. is going to do it because Justin's gone to Chattanooga and saw no one say, go yeah. fuck with Justin in Chattanooga. Yeah. And it's not like you're doing it out of a bitter place, but it's like yeah, I I, I it just see genuine, you doing it that. It do come from a genuine place too. I'm just like a genuine supportive person, and I want to see everybody yeah. win. But at the same time, I do hope that my peer group sees like you supporting one of your other peers is not taking anything away from you. Yeah. It's like you know, so yeah, it's like it'll be nice when I'm performing somewhere. Somebody be like, yo, check out Justin in this city. But even if they don't, it's like, hey, man, I did my part as a good human being. Yeah. Now, you could follow my lead and do the same thing, or you could be like, you know, fuck, fuck that nigga. Yeah. But you know who was also undervalued? Jesus. Ooh, mm. that's right, Jay. Let so him know. sometimes you just got to go. It's, it's, it's all really <laughs> deeper than this. And, and all, of this is a, all of this is a blessing. We're all placed in where we are for a reason. So if we undervalue, but we are positively affecting others, like, you know, the improv may not appreciate you. But I do, and and but, but I say this though. I say this though. From being a good person, bro, I'm 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 writing movies. I'm executive producing. I'll re I'm I might be in more position to help your career than the improv. That's a fact. That's so a fact. So it's like just I think just generally focusing on being the best person you can be. Mm -hmm. Everything kind of come. You would hope everything comes back around, and if not, there's just a fulfillment of like maybe I'm not valued, but if you don't value yourself, none of the other anybody valuing you even matters. So just doing the work so that you like yourself, you care less about how other people value you. Yeah. Yeah. Jamie, you don't got nothing to say about that? Make that a clip, my boy. Uh -oh, that's Zoom in on me. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Crop out Jamie. <laughs> oh, she's crying. She's crying out. <laughs> but do you have a Just manager? Shout out the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to superimpose another guest. <laughs> <laughs> you gonna look at it. You be like, CT again? <laughs> I deserve that. Nah, <laughs> I just no, feel like no, I go no, harder. No, you've been funny. Nah, you've been great. I feel like for me, I just go harder in those moments because I don't look at it as I look at it as undervalued because they just don't really know me. Mm. And like, I know where I'm at in my comedic career is like more people need to know who I am, and then that just means I need to go harder. And because even like I said, when I came into it, I had no idea how comedy worked. I just was doing it. So it's like, oh, okay, um, I need to reach out to them. I'm thinking like, well, they know I'm a comedian. They should hit me up. And it's like, no, you got to be proactive and you got to hit them like, hey, can I get a spot? Or you got to show up to the club and meet. Because I'll do this too. I'll go to clubs and I'll talk to the people I know. Because I'm actually very shy, like in real life. So I'll talk to the people I just know. And it's like, oh, you got to talk to the promoter or the booker. Or um, you will see like, how does this person get on this show? And not hating, but being like, dang, how they... Because they just open their mouth. You know what I'm saying? So for me, if in those moments where I feel that way, I'm like, oh, I just need to go harder. Okay, then I, I need to do this, 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 and this. And, but I don't let it really get to me in a sense of, because I feel like I have so much more work to do. So I don't feel like I'm at the point yet of being able to be like, I can't believe mm. the stand-up industry is doing me like, you know what I mean? It's like, no, okay, then you just need to go a little harder. It's for me. No, I agree with that. Accountability, you know, you got to put in that work. So even like James was like, you know, I could be better or I could fucking start posting these stand-up clips, yeah. you know. And I feel the same way. Even with me, it's like, you know, I could look at everybody else's fan base growing or I could say, hey, you got a bunch of material that you're sitting on and a bunch of footage. How about you take the time, 
cut it up and start putting it out there. You know? Yeah. yeah. Jamie. <laughs> do I feel undervalued? You no, don't. What do you <laughs> yeah, I, I, <laughs> Jamie does not feel undervalued. That one time in nineteen ninety nine. No, I, I agree with uh Keisha. You know, I think if any at any moment where you feel un- undervalued, it's really just like you gotta put the work in. You know what I mean? Because the thing about it is the people that we value is because we admire them in some way. You know, so if you feel undervalued, it's maybe because they don't see the talent that you have. It's like it's different between potential and I can see it. You know, like it's like, oh, potentially you could go to the stars. But if you're like putting that work out, like the putting that work in and putting it out, like with the clips and all the stuff, it's like, oh, they're going to make it, you know, and they're going to value you probably a little bit more like you're working your ass off. We see it, you know, that's the, that's like a a benefit of social media, you know, um, but just to be clear, you got your following from doing sketches. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Yeah. From doing like comedy sketches and stuff. Um, where do people, where do have people on the podcast that you don't know? Hey man, you know. <laughs> hey, we're just getting How'd you know get in this again? Hey, we're getting, yeah, we're getting to know each other. But you know, that, that, is, that is part of the podcast too, is to like, some people that I don't know as well to get to know them in this platform, you know. Well, what's your name again? <laughs> 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 but no, I, like being valued, sometimes being undervalued over and over again is a telltale sign that maybe it's not for you. Not only is it not for you, <laughs> But you need to get your shit <laughs> together. Giggle. Sometimes I be thinking this too, man. We may think what we putting out is great, bruh. But that's my paranoia. Yeah, I'm like, are they? Is the <laughs> algorithm hating, or am I just not that funny? <laughs> Straight up, though. You see what I'm saying? Sometimes, and sometimes you got to take a real hard look and be like, you know, maybe the shit I put out just isn't great. Yeah. For, through my lens, I'm thinking it's great, but the people have spoken. <laughs> Sometimes. Sometimes no, it ain't no. the algorithm. Sometimes it's, it's the people that have spoken. But it's more than that, guys. Go for it, Jamie. What is oh it? Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> what is it, Jamie? Do you have an algorithm manager? <laughs> okay. I, you probably need one. <laughs> no. Um, <laughs> I feel like... That's going to be a clip. Go. <laughs> We're going to do all the Jamie clips. Go. 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 <laughs> Uh, I I feel like in order to be successful in stand up, there's a certain path, right? In order to be successful in social media, there's a certain path. Like it in social media, it I would has disagree. To, What's the certain path yeah. to be successful in stand in stand up comedy? I don't know. I, I, mean, I have <laughs> edit. That's the thing I was going to say. Like, I have you, edit. You you they, because there is no clear. You go to college yeah. four years, you should be graduating, or you know you need this yeah. number of credits. But with stand up or with <laughs> acting, it's like you don't know when yeah, your time. You, you could know. be really great, That's and it's fact. just not your time yet. Or yeah, it's Jamie. Not, you know. Well, but okay. You so don't have the a, point. So that's a Morgan Freeman. The yeah. point. The point. <laughs> Goddamn the, Jesus over here. The, what else? Go for it. The Jamie. point. Jackson. The point I'm saying about there's a path for social media. That's what I wanted to say, right? So it visually has to look appealing. It has to be quality. Um, and on top of that, like I've I watch people and I watch like their content, and I'm not saying it's not funny because it's funny. But it took forever for you to get to the joke. Mm. So it's really there's a there's mm, okay. there's a way in <laughs> there's it's just the fact that with social media, like there ha- it has to be done in a certain way for it to be successful. And it's not because it's not funny and it's not necessarily because it's not in the algorithm. It's because the way it's shot, we've already lost interest. Mm, I've heard that too now. Yeah. So so everything gotta be like Super crispy, like I can't, I can't have nothing from the phone, the iPhone. The I iPhone. mean, you can. Not it, the iPhone one, nigga. You better get, the thir- you better get the my 13. iPhone clips. Do not be hitting, and I'll be funny in them, but they just don't hit. The my same. homeboy because Akash it's not told visually me that, appealing. That my home Akash Singh told me that he was like, you gotta look good. You gotta that, look good. If you look at flagrant, uh, podcast, it's a TV w- show. W- it's a TV show. But that's where it's getting. Yeah. Even these cameras, these cameras ain't shit to what I really need to be having. I, you know, I'm gonna have to eventually elevate. The type of camera, lighting, all that type of stuff. Yeah, it's got to be. It's gonna be virtual reality in two years. Internet know? is the TV. Internet is TV, basically. That's what yes. it's turning into. So yeah, your stuff gotta look TV ready or yeah. TV yeah. quality. Yeah. But then there's but there's also just like so many apps. Like I so like and to your point, like those are all like just like basic rules that like a lot of people 
comedians be like Amish people, like, uh, internet, what the, uh, like, we don't want to do none of that, like, I just want to post my little clip that they gave me as yeah. is with the barcode in the, in the yeah. thing. And it, it's not even nine by 16, it's, it's like just a, like the whole reel be like black, black, and then like, yeah. Yeah, it's a thing. All right, y'all. And captions, use captions, y'all. If I see another comedian post a clip without no captions, don't you see everybody using captions? That'd you be- think you don't need <laughs> captions? <laughs> they lazy. Damn. That's what it is, man. You know what? At at the end of the day, where we at in this uh, grind of being comedians and actors, you can't be lazy. Mm-hmm. You got to put in the work, point blank, period. And because while you sitting back saying I, what I don't want to do, there's 20,000 other people saying, well, I'm going to do that shit. And, and they're less go- talented. And they're less talented. And you will... See with their consistency, their numbers going up. When you look at that man or woman who you know in your heart is not as funny as you, and they are who is the person leaps for your- and bounds <laughs> richer than you. I want to know who you was watching on Instagram for you to be like, I I'm posting my clips. You don't got to see. No, it. no, no, no. I'm a I'm a. I'm gonna keep it without. And th- these aren't people where I was like, they don't deserve. They're not. They're not funny. Mm-hmm. I don't think that. But. Uh, Trevor Wallace, not for stand-up. I, I just saw how many followers he had that, like, Trevor Wallace will never have to be an elite stand-up comedian. And I think he's very funny. Yeah. But he'll never have to be because he went so, he did the work for so long when, when I was out here not wanting to do it. And now he has millions of followers on all these platforms. And now, even though he's not, like, known for his stand-up, he can tour the country. Yeah, and I'm sure he's selling out. Oh, no, so he does, is. So, we, so does the internet matter more than on stage? I just want to say that Trevor 60, Wallace... 60, 40, yes. Mm. Trevor Wallace mm. came from social media. He, he did what? He came from social media mm-hmm. doing comedy content, right? Yeah. Um, and he just got into stand-up. That's again. what I'm saying. He's been doing you it for a few years now. For, yeah, but a couple years. Mm-hmm. He's pretty decent. I've done some That's what I'm with saying. Him. It's just like, man, like I, he has definitely put that work in. in like. Uh, and that's my point. Okay, you see somebody who you think is at least, you're at least equally funny to, and they're selling out a tour. Mm-hmm. And if I was to, I've had my CAA agents pretty much look at me and be like, bro, until you get a bigger following, there's not too much mm-hmm we can do as this big agency because if you want to if you want a weekend and then trevor or renee or any of these 150 plus people who can sell out shows come through renee vaca yeah Yeah, i know he's killing it right now like like they're going to they're prioritizing the people who are bringing the people into the seats not the people who have the best material Mm -hmm. or or the most credits they don't give a fuck about credits what what is a credit we we wasted our time on credits yeah we did we i mean we got paid but like besides that like to pay for these cameras yeah (laughs) but that's straight up though (laughs) you have a you have your own studio that someone would love to live in (laughs) So, so one one comparison that i kind of feel like uh is overlooked a little bit is like it's like Trevor Wallace came from social media from doing comedy content. He is hilarious. You know what I mean? His videos, he was posting a new video almost every single day. Do you know how much work I think that is? And he's That's writing all that and he's like country, he's doing country all Wayne, of this. Country Wayne. Yeah, like they're like that is now he's that's like no days off. His stand up is funny. That's what I heard. I haven't seen him yet. I haven't seen him yet. <laughs> <laughs> but I heard not bad for something. No, but, seen before. no, no, but work from respected people. They oh, told me he's yeah. funny. Like, I've heard it's it. like, like when you see him, you, like, he, like I don't. To me, he's someone who has was doing stand up, but was putting out the skits, not putting out the stand up. And so you know him for the skits, but he was probably doing stand up a lot longer mm-hmm. than we would think, more longer than a Trevor Wallace. And my point about Trevor was like your point. His work ethic is what's giving him more success mm-hmm. in stand up than me. Is he funnier than me? In my opinion, no. No. Is am I funnier than him? I will not say that. I will just say that based off performance and material, if it was just based off quality of performance, mm-hmm. I feel like I should I I should garner the same type of uh draw, payment, whatever, as a Trevor Wallace. But to your point, due to his work ethic, he deserves 
everything that he has. Right. And he deserves to have that fan base that can sell out places. And so, like, that, but it's that type of thing that be like, all right, you got to do the other side. Because I, I can sit and do all the, the, the dope spots here and literally come up with the, the most elite 60 minutes you've ever heard. Better than killing him softly. Right. But if no one wants to see it, no one will see it. Yeah. Woo. I just think that sometimes, uh, the so like, uh, there's like a social media girl who uh, got into stand up, and she's trash. Like you know what I'm saying? And it's sometimes it, where it's just kind of like, it, it's like you want to be hard on like some like like a Trevor Wallace or something like that. And I'm just like I like I understand. I'm not being hard on Trevor Wallace. I don't think he's being hard on Trevor Wallace. No. I'm saying that his work ethic outside of stand up comedy has made him a bigger draw in stand up comedy than me. Yeah. Well, well well yeah. Um and this I've this done girl, stuff with Trevor. I'm cool with Trevor. Don't be Oh, I'm not saying like that. I'm not saying that. Don't, don't change saying. the narrative where I came up here <laughs> right. and shitted on Trevor. I did not do that. No, no, you didn't. That's not <laughs> what I was trying to uh, make it seem like at all. Um it's just like this girl, she has millions of followers. And she could probably get the draw of like getting clubs and stuff like that, but she's just not funny. And and she didn't necessarily come from doing comedy content. So it really is just kind of like from like left field where she is just kind of like, oh, let me just get into that. Whereas where uh, like, a, like a Trevor is it's a lateral move, you know, and uh, and that's where I'm just like, OK, well, it kind of makes sense. But like for someone like this, I'm like, how? For some people who have a lot, a lot of followers. Stand up is just something to do to make money because you have these followers. It's just like selling clothes, selling mm. plates or whatever. Like stand up is just a place where you can take your following and get some money. And I don't respect those people. And that's kind of okay. who you're talking about. It sounds like yeah. you're talking about with old girl. Where like, you know, you have a lot of people like who will randomly be like, I'm gonna do stand up, like singers and just people because they just <laughs> have like a bunch of following and they just want to do something. I don't respect that. Like Trevor is not that. Like Trevor like does stand up, like does spots, he like puts in the work. he puts in the work. Yeah. But yeah, it's it's just like, but just doing the work and I just, I think in general, just doing the work of creating a following gives you an advantage in anything you want to do. Mm -hmm. Chef, mm -hmm. lawyer, athlete. Working, fitness. 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 So I, I think it's just a general thing with that. Mm. And, it, and it goes into comedy as well. Hi, man. This has been an amazing episode. Jamie, do you feel that way? I do. I feel like this has been a great episode. <laughs> been an amazing episode, man. Jamie, sign us off. <laughs> we, we, I know, right? We went in the. We talked about the clips. We talked about the specials. We talked about being undervalued. You know what I'm saying? We got some good stuff. We got some clips. I love how we collectively had all not watched one of the specials that you wanted to talk about. Yeah, that's. Uh, I just that's haven't gotten around to it yet. I'm gonna. Watch I'm gonna it. see it. Yeah. But you know, my 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 final thing is, and I hate to make this so. Uh, because uh, uh, you didn't watch it either, but a part, and maybe <laughs> my supportive nature also. I only knew about some more special because Ida Rodriguez. I seen her at yeah. an awards show, and she mentioned it. The comedy awards. Mm -hmm. The comedy awards. Yeah. That's the only way I even knew about it. And when did it come out? Exactly, like about a month, two no, months it's ago. On, it, I've it. seen it on the. You know how when you um, hit Netflix and it'll show you like what's new. Or See, it didn't even come up on my shit. Up, I just haven't. It wasn't didn't show me. It, it wasn't my. It'll be like Love Is Blind. <laughs> 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 but a part of me was thinking, why aren't all the black female yes. comedians like spreading the word about her special? Because if her special is successful, it's only gonna benefit y'all. It's only mm -hmm. it's only gonna make Netflix say, say oh, there's an appetite. For black female comedians specials so let us see who else we can find mm. to put on our platform so it kind of boggles my mind that i didn't see like every black female comedian posted about some more special black comedian in general black comedian in general now mm -hmm. i did do a post because that's my nature though i don't fucking know some more and i did a monique post that was before i saw it but <laughs> <laughs> not joking yeah. i had actually saw it <laughs> I saw it and I still hilarious. I still posted about it. I hey, y'all go watch this bullshit. <laughs> That's how supportive I am. But but the reason I did it is because one, I'm looking at it as these are two black women. Like I need to be supportive of two black women. That was my number one thought. Here are two black women with comedy specials. Number two, I'm not seeing nobody else fucking supporting their shit. So I remember Ali Wong started following me on Twitter because I posted about her first special. 
I didn't know Ali Wong. I was just like, yo, I just seen this this woman, Ali Wong, special. It's hilarious. Y'all check it out. She started following me on Twitter. She was like, oh, my God, comedians never support one another. Like, I appreciate you. She probably don't know who the fuck I am. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. She probably won't remember me. But in that moment, you know, that was just me just being genuine. Like, yo, let me support support her. So, anyways, that was kind of my thought when it came to the Monique special and the some more special. I'm like, why aren't I'm seeing more black female comedians support their special because it's only going to help y'all at the end mm -hmm. of the day. I feel like it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I know for me, everybody knows this. I'm always tardy to all the parties when it comes to TV and film. I just saw coming to America a few years ago. Whatever. Um, the first yep. one? Hey, hey, hey. So, <laughs> it was a very great movie. I will say, of all the movies y'all get on me for not seeing Coming to America was excellent. Oh, definitely anyway, the first one. Uh, <laughs> yeah, the second one. I've seen the second one, too. Um, so, I'm always late to watching stuff. Like, I'm not even going to hold you. Uh, and sometimes late to even knowing that it's out. Like I said, I did see it pop up on my Netflix. I haven't watched it yet. But that is a very good point. Like, that is something that we should do more. I think that, in my experience for black women in the comedy it's either one or the other. It's either like girl power or it's like catty kind of. Yeah. So I don't know if that's the thing, if people feel, and I can't speak for it, if people feel like that's a because so many episode. comedians no. No. <laughs> don't support each other and don't, you know, if they feel like, well, I ain't posting her junk because I don't know if that's the reason why I can't speak for anybody else, but it's a thought of maybe. Like, I don't know. But that is a very good point. Mm -hmm. Like, as black women, we absolutely should. All right. Well, I'm glad I didn't say nothing crazy. Jamie? I'm going to watch it. You got anything? Um, we got a time for, for yeah, real this time. I mean, yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no. uh, what y'all got? What y'all socials? What y'all got? Y'all got anything we should check out? If y'all got podcast, stand up show, what y'all got? I mean, always, always stream Game Theory on HBO uh, with Bomani Jones. Um, watch that ASAP. Tell your friends to watch it because we have not been picked up for another season. <laughs> so all the views matter. Uh, Jay, so Jay Snow, Sydney Castillo on there as well. And then, um, Follow my clips. Share my clips. Share them. Don't clips. just like. Share. Straight up. Uh, yeah, everything I have, I post on Instagram. So follow me on the gram. It's Keisha. E I T S K E Y S H A. E. I have a podcast. Somebody's auntie. Um, my series should be out soon. My editor, we had a situation. Um, Keys to the city, but I'll post that when it comes out. So find everything there. Nice. Um, my name is Jamie Riley. You can find me on all socials. It is at Jamie A. Riley, Twitch, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, all of that. Um, yeah, just keep you updated. And if I ever like have shows coming up and stuff like that, it'll be on my page. When's your next show? Um, uh, actually, I have one May 3rd. Uh, um, did, did you book Irvine. that through your comedy manager? <laughs> 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 no, 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 no. She's like, I had enough of your shit. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, it's your man, Justin Hyatt, man. Appreciate y'all uh, checking in, man. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe, share, share the clips, man. And uh, make sure you check out my In My Feelings episodes also. That's just me by myself. I'm, I'm all up in my feelings. Talk uh -huh. about shit. Um, <laughs> and if anybody has been offended by anything that we said today, just remember one thing. Fuck your, your feelings. feelings.